Now, let's try and understand the gross investment and the net investment. Well, the gross investment is the investment or the money which is invested or which is spent by a firm for the final output. That is those goods, those things which are meant there for further production. Well, in this we have been talking of the machinery as such as the gross investment. Now, in the gross investment, remember that these are all meant for becoming both obsolete as well as have the tendency of depreciating. Whereas in net investment, we have to find out when we are calculating that we have to find out the real investment. So that will be when I say gross investment minus depreciation. For example, I purchased machinery of say 5 lakh rupees. But after a year when I am calculating it, the net, in net investment which I am saying is the wear and tear of the machinery because it has become obsolete now. So that has to be subtracted from this sum. So my net investment will be when gross investment is subtracted by the depreciation. So that's the basic difference between gross and net. If you see the salary slips of the people, it also is talked about under two headings, the gross salary and the net salary. Gross salary is inclusive of so many things, but the net salary is the subtraction of all those items which are being added in the gross salary. Okay. The next important term is the domestic economic territory. The domestic economic territory is the territory, is the area, is the land of a country or the geographical territory of a country in which there is a free flow of production, consumption and expenditure. Besides, there is a government at that particular area. Let's talk about it in larger view, domestic economic territory, meaning to say of the country in its own self, economic that is dealing with money, territory means the land. So, a land that is a geographical territory in which there are economic activities going on, that is flow of production, consumption and expenditure and it is the domestic, it is free to make its own policies that means it, it has a responsible government. Since it fulfills three important aspects, that of having a government, free flow of production, consumption and expenditure beside having a geographical territory land of itself gives it the term of a domestic economic territory. Then I was also talking of the normal residence which you have been already explained that the normal residents are those residents who have been staying in the country over a period of time and they have their economic interest in that particular country. Even a foreigner can be a normal resident of a country. That is to say, even we talk of the NRIs, that is the non-resident Indians, if they have their economic interest here, they are the normal residents. And the students or a patient who has gone for a treatment, though is staying for a very long period of time in a country, is not a normal resident because his economic interest lies in his home country. 
Now, when the national income has to be calculated, it is generally done on two bases, national income at current prices and national income at constant prices. When I say national income at current prices, that means I am calculating the income, the national income at the prevailing year. That is for say, for example, 2011, if I am calculating it at the current price, so it means at 2011. But when the national income is calculated at constant price, this is when I take my base year as the year of calculation. But which is a better method of calculating whether it is the current price or the constant price, the economists feel that the national income at constant price is a better method of calculating national income because this gives us an idea of how much jump has been there of the national income, the comparisons which can be made of the prevailing year of the years in between and also the comparisons which can be made with other countries. So these are the two ways at which the national income is calculated though national income at constant prices is a better method of the two. Now we will try and understand the difference between factor cost and market price. Now when I say factor cost, it means the factor payment made by the firm towards all the factors of production. What does this mean? It means whatever cost has been incurred by the producer in making a commodity inclusive of all the things that is raw material, the use of machinery, the rent, the wages, depreciation, everything has to be included in calculating the factor cost. That is all the direct and the indirect payments which have been made in order to make a particular commodity. That is in the process of production, whatever cost has been incurred by a firm is called as a factor cost. But what is a market price? Market price is a price at which that same commodity is sold. So the price of a commodity at which it is sold in the market is the market price. Now this market price can be as we say the net indirect taxes minus subsidy. We will try and understand what is this. 